What's up guys, Austin Billworks here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install a Billworks short shifter in your GR Corolla or Corolla hatch. Of course, you can go with any shift knob you want with our short shifter. So let's get into the install. Uh, first step here, we're gonna remove this bolt under the steering column. Next, I'm gonna remove the glove box. So we're just gonna open the glove box on the side here. There's an arm that will just pop off. Then I'm gonna pull straight back on the glove box on both sides and then, then it'll kind of wiggle out. You'll see there's two tabs here uh, that'll just release. Now that the glove box is removed, it's gonna expose this Phillips head bolt. I'm gonna remove that. Now that we've removed both of those bolts, we can remove this trim piece. We'll have to disconnect this connector. And that's out of the way. Next, I'm gonna remove this center console piece. And for that, I'm just gonna grab both sides and lift straight up. We'll wanna flip that around and disconnect these connectors. There's also a couple of wire ties here that I'm just gonna cut just to make it easier. Next, I'm gonna remove the shift knob. Of course, this Corolla has a bellow work shift knob. Pull that off. Stock one just threads off as well. So next I'm gonna remove the e-brake boot. That just pops right out. Then I'm gonna remove the center console here. I'm gonna lift up from the front to the back. There are gonna be some electrical connections at the back here. Uh, for the regular Corolla hatch, you will have to open up uh, the center console and there's bolts inside of that that just remove those bolts and everything should be able to lift out. There is also connected here that we'll remove. And that gets out of the way. Next, I'm gonna remove the kick panels. Uh, same on both sides, they just pop off very easily. And I'm just gonna cut this wire tie. Then there's two Phillips head bolts here. Next, I'll remove these two bolts here. Now we can remove the center console. And just fish that out. So before I pull the stock shifter out, I'm gonna take a measurement here of the throw. So I'm just measuring off the dash here. Uh, I'm gonna start in third gear, about 12 and a half inches, to fourth gear, about 16 inches. So that's three and a half inches of throw from third to fourth. Now for the regular Corolla hatch, it is a fair amount longer. Uh, I'll try and get a measurement for that uh, to include. But for the GR Corolla, we have about three and a half inches of throw. So in order to remove the, the factory shifter here, we have to remove this, this lock washer. Uh, you can use a small cutoff wheel on, like a, on a Dremel, but since most people won't have that, I'm just gonna use a, a small flathead screwdriver to get in behind the washer to, to pry it off. Next, we're gonna disconnect the shifter cables from the shifter. And you can see here, you'll need to pry apart these two metal clips. And 
and it'll pop off. Now I'm gonna knock this pin through. I'm just gonna use a hammer. I'll just come through the other side. What I'm gonna do next is remove the reverse lockout. So you need to open up this white, this white clip here. Just be careful because there's a spring underneath it. Once you remove that, then the whole lockout will come off. And with that pin out, then you can just lift up on this piece. This will come out. Then we can pull off this side arm here. There's also a spring that we're going to remove. Just be careful because it's very greasy. And the stock shifter is able to come out. So now that we have the stock shifter out of the car, I'm going to remove the pivot cup and transfer it to the Bellet Works short shifter. I'm just going to use the pliers, grab onto it, and then rotate it. So it'll pry out. I don't like to use a hammer because I don't want to break the cup. And there should be enough grease on here if you want to. You can add a little bit more grease. I'll steal some from the stock shifter. And I'm just gonna push down on this to get it to snap in. So that's on there. That's ready to go back in the car. But first we need to remove the reverse lockout assembly so we can get it back into the housing. I'm gonna take my Allen wrenches. So the top portion of the lockout will come off first. Then I'll slightly lift up on the lower portion. Remove this bolt. That'll allow the lockout lower portion to drop. And you'll have a snap ring exposed. I'll use our snap ring pliers. and everything else will slide off. So now it's ready to go back inside the car and then we'll have to reinstall the lockout assembly, uh, but we'll get back inside the car and, and get it finished up. So next I have to remove these four bolts. Uh, we remove those bolts so we can get underneath and install the solid shifter bushings. Uh, that'll give us a little extra space for the extended shifter, uh, the extended billet work shifter. Uh, so I'm gonna remove those. So now we need to push out the metal sleeves and then the rubber bushings. That'll allow us to install our new bushings. And then I'll do this to all four bushings. Now that we have those four bushings out, we can go ahead and install our solid bushings. Now that we have the bushings in, I can install the provided hardware. So next I'm gonna install the spring. I'm gonna slide it over this extrusion here and rotate it down. And I'm gonna take this tab and preload it to where it touches underneath. So that should be locked into place. I'm gonna take the billet work shifter and I'm gonna install it into the pivot, into the shifter cable first. That'll just be easier to do it now than once the shifter's into place. Then I'm gonna kinda of rotate this to the side here. Now we need to get the shifter in between the spring. So I'm gonna take a small screwdriver, and I'm gonna pry up on it to open it up further and then slide the shifter in and then let the spring back down and pull it out. So now it's kind of held in there. Then 
I'm going to slide this up and over a while. I'll let that rest in place. Slide our housing back on, lock it in and rotate it down. I'll take our pin here, slide it through. If you need to, you can use a small hammer. And now everything should be attached. You're neutral. Should have the return to center from the spring. Now we can reinstall the reverse lockout. So I'm just gonna take some grease here and just apply a little bit of grease to the shaft here. Slide that down, we'll slide it down the whole way as far as we can. I'll slide the spring and the washer. the snap ring. Make sure the snap ring is in the groove. Then we'll lift up on the lockout, slide that bolt through, and snug it up. This bolt doesn't need to be super tight. Then we can slide the reverse lockout down. Snug these bolts up. They don't need to be very tight either. Just tight enough so they don't come loose. Now we can check the functionality of the lockout. We'll go into first and second. Feels good. Lift up and get in reverse. First, second, third, fourth. Now I'm gonna reinstall the included lock washer. So I'm just gonna take a socket here Put it over top of the washer. Then I just hammer that on. Now the shifter's installed, we can start assembling uh, the center console. So we'll assemble that the same way we took it apart. Now that we have the billwork short shifter installed, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the throws. I'm gonna do the same thing, measure from third to fourth. So I'll put it in third. I'm gonna measure off a point here on the dash. Uh, about six and, a little over six and three eighths. So six and three eighths to about nine and an eighth. So that puts us at about two and three quarters inches of throw. So that's about, uh, what's that? It's about three quarters of an inch shorter than stock, uh, which calculates out to almost 25% shorter throws. Now, of course, last step is installing a billowwork shift knob. You can use any shift knob that you'd like on our short shifter. This is the standard 12 by 1.25 threads, just like stock. But of course, we recommend a billowwork short shifter. So first, we're gonna thread down our jam nut. 
and we'll thread it down far enough just to make sure that we can still engage reverse. So I gotta go up a little bit higher. Yep, I'll make sure we have a little extra clearance. Then I'm gonna thread down our insert here. We'll just thread that down until it touches the jam nut. Then I'm gonna tighten the two together. Then we can thread on the shift knob. Now, if you're using a billet work shift knob and you have an engraving on the top, chances are it's gonna be crooked. So what you do is you'll just unthread the shift knob. Then you'll readjust the jam nut and insert, rotate it however many degrees that the engraving was off, retighten it, and then reinstall the shift knob. But this one does not have an engraving on it, so we're gonna run like this. We'll double check all the gears. Reverse is still good. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Of course, it's a fair amount shorter. Feels nice and crisp. This is our Fusion here in candy red. This is with the red lockout. Of course, you can go with any color reverse lockout that you want. You can go with any belt work shift knob that you want, or you can go with a stock one if you'd like. Now that I've showed you how to install your billet work short shifter with our billet work shift knob, head over to our website, shop our products, or if you have any questions, just send us an email. We'll see you next time. <music>